This week on the Roommates Podcast, just a message to the men, we feel you. Mm-hmm. And one of those ropes, one of those ladders to get you out of that mental hell is to speak, is to talk, is to say something. And it can be something as an email. It can be something as a DM. It don't have to be, if you're not comfortable with a phone call, it don't have to be that. But Hafiz and I are here for you. We understand you. Your pain, we understand what you're going through, but once again, in this life, it's gonna be constant mental hell that's gonna pop up. Like I said, it's gonna be a death, it's gonna be you lose your job, it's gonna be some situation that's gonna cause you to go back into mental hell. You have to have multiple strategies, multiple ways, multiple ropes, multiple ladders to get you out of the pits of hell. And that's what we're trying to do. Yo, what up, world? It is your boy, Hafiz. Chris, the star of the show, baby. Yup, yup, yup. And welcome, guys. Welcome yes, once yes. again to The Roommates, a worldwide community. Shout out everybody around the world. Shout out the world. Where there's a bunch of individuals who are united on five key values. What are those key values, Hafiz? I am glad you asked. It is becoming... <laughs> Holistic health, kindness, togetherness, and a thirst for knowledge. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, known as the best hour of your week. Where you are entertained like a stand-up. Educated like a TED Talk. And enlightened like a sermon. Yes, 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 yes. Preach, brother, preach. Yo, 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 yo. We are back. We are. What up? What's going on, player? How no. you feel? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go down that route. <laughs> Let's not go down there, shall we? That's your voice? That's your deflect voice? Yeah. That's your Lewis house? <laughs> boy, that boy Lewis, man. Yo. You be killing us. How, how are you doing, man? I'm all right. Um, I'm better. Trying to get better. Yeah. Take it day by day. Yep. Trying to lose some weight. Okay. You know. Beach bod season. Shout out the Belo Hive. The Belo <laughs> Hive is buzzing. The, <laughs> the Belo <laughs> Hive is buzzing. No, no, happy. You want to see some shirtless pictures in the hive? And wow, some girls have been asking me about them. Nobody's been asking you about them. Everybody keep calling you chocolate man, chocolate man. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not you. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, man, oh man. You gotta stop boosting me, man. You know you out here. You the real. You the real star of the show. I'm just Scotty Pippen. You're, You're Michael lying. Jordan. You're lying. How does it feel to be Michael Jordan? It feels no. How does it feel to be Michael Jordan? If I if I was Michael Jordan, <laughs> I wouldn't be getting the lack of rings that I'm getting right now. I wouldn't be getting all the losses. I'm just kidding. I don't lose anymore. But I wouldn't. Man. I would. You're you're the true champion. No nah, man, ladies. Nah. I'm like the spoiled kids that reap all the benefits. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, ladies, ladies. Thank you guys for all the support. You guys are awesome. You too, men. Shout out, fellas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no, nah, man, we're, I mean, the show is to help uplift, encourage, build up men. And women love this show because they see healthy men growing. But at the same time, if there's a bunch of women in the crowd, I'm not going to neglect them and not talk to them and not address their issues and their frustrations. You know what I mean? That's disrespectful. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? It's not, that's not manly of you. Yeah, yeah. You a man, bro. How you feel? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You're a man. You're How, a man. You feel? How you feel? Um, but I've gotten a lot of questions. People have some questions for you, man. Okay. Like um, <laughs> a lot of people were asking questions about the Patreon. Okay. And um, a lot of people were like trying to understand just exactly why we created it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if we didn't clarify that enough in the previous episode, but for the people who are confused about the Patreon, which is our subscription-based community service to support us, why did we create the Patreon? What is the purpose for creating the Patreon? And not like why we, to help you, but more so for the people. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's something that we wanted to build a network and a community for our listeners. Um, we are so grateful and so blessed to have listeners across not only the nation of the United States, but the world. You know, we got people in Russia, we got people in Israel, we got people in Ireland, and we got people in South America. I mean, we have people literally around the world that not only love us, but love the values that we have and generally just want to connect with other people around the world as well. 
So this is we talked about this a long time ago where we tried to build a community where, that we can connect and Patreon give us the ability to do that. No, that's a good answer. And like and like you said, like the the big idea is to help other people. Mm-hmm. Um like our work is is really changing lives. Mm-hmm. And um, I, there's a story I, w- I want you to share. You don't have to share this person's name. Um, but tell the story about the, the the young lady who watched the film that you were the star in. Shout out to actor Bilo, who's <laughs> talked about how it prevented her from harming herself. So so you don't have to say this person's name. Um, but generally speaking, can you can you share them about that film that you created? And we, uh, created. we created and like how that person responded to that film. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. So back in, was it May 2018, we released a short film called Help. And that was about uh, mental health and basically finding, fighting your inner demons, the inner person that, that you deal with. Um, and it came from this person that, you know, I've known. Uh, but I wouldn't say we were the best of friends, but we were, you know, we were cool. We were good people. Um, didn't talk every day. Uh, and somebody I least expect really dealt with um, certain issues. So when we were just catching up, she was just telling me that um, that after watching the film, she decided to go to therapy um, because she was having suicidal thoughts. Yeah. And I don't think at that time I really just understood exactly what was happening um but just looking back at it now it's like we created that film for that reason Mm -hmm. um because not only that you know it was a lot of big buzz about mental health at that time but um it was not only that person but it was a lot of other stories that was coming out that people have recently committed suicide before the film or were attempting suicide or had suicidal thoughts. I mean, it was so many people that reached out to me that I personally knew that was dealing with that and felt some kind of impact um, by the film and some kind of message that it really just... It showed me how, how, like how something so small as a 17-minute film can make a huge impact in this world. And I know you and I have been really fighting to create change and make an impact in this world. And for that short film to do that um, is nothing short of amazing. I'm like, I don't know. I just know that we are called um, to continue sharing ideas, podcasts, short films like that um, because there are people out here that are broken and they need help. Um, and I'm just glad we get to be, you know, a solution. Yeah, no, I was talking to um, a friend the other day and I was ta- telling her that story and she was, she was like, she was like overwhelmed. Yeah. And she was like, like, I just freaked out hearing about that story that there was a person about to end their life. Yeah. And then you created a piece of content. Yeah. And they decided to live. Like that's that's like, you know, we're always getting emails. We're I'm always saying. getting messages. Like, I don't know if we really understand what the crap we're doing out here. Yeah. I don't I don't, I don't really know, bro. Honestly. Yeah. I just don't know. Yeah. So um I was just thinking about that and I'm like, man, like, that's really crazy. Um and so one of the biggest things that I've seen in society is that there's so much toxic stuff out there, you know? Mm-hmm. Like there's, like you turn on the news, rape, murder, genocide, flood. Like it's all negative things consuming you. And a lot of people are consumed by that, especially in today's world. You go on social media, especially if you're following garbage sites like The Shade Room and Baller Alert and Bossip and all types and World Star. Heaven forbid you still follow World Star. You know, it's consuming you with negativity and like that begins to really affect your emotional and mental health. And so I was like, man, dude, like a lot of people are so like they're dying for something good. But in all honesty, 
that positive stuff doesn't sell. Hands down. Like the positive stuff does not sell. And that's why for us, it's so important that we we show people that it does sell. Because if people just care about money for the most part, like if it's all, if it's just sex, murder, and drug sell, then what are they going to promote in society? But to have this show, to have this community that promotes these values, that gives people life, man, it's really important. And so the Patreon is, is so big, you know, it's bigger than people think. Um, you know, we're constantly selling it, but it's, it's bigger. It's not for us. It's for, the, it's for everybody else, you know? And I just really hope that people will, will sign up and be a part of the community and get more life. Shout out Drake. <laughs> <laughs> and, Great uh, mixtape. No, Playlist. Okay. <laughs> or EP, <laughs> PE, whatever you want to call it. But no, like on a serious note, it's just like, man, so many people need it. Mm-hmm. Um, and like what we're creating, especially just connecting, man. Too many people are disconnected. So many people are lost. And so the Patreon guys is, is, is our community, man. It's a place where you get to meet other like-minded people. We have a roommate database where you can connect with all the different roommates. Uh, but yeah, man, it's just like so many people complain about what's wrong. But then when it's time to make a change, so many people are okay with the status quo. And I just don't want to be okay with that, you know? Yeah, I mean, like that. It's like that saying, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, but... like. It just blows my mind how many people have emailed us and say, I didn't know men like you existed, women, and then guys say, I didn't know there was other guys that felt this way. Like, it, it, like if you guys it's like could just all see the time. it. Yeah, it's all the time. It's only probably 95% of our conversations. Yeah. Men and women had said a version of that. It is shocking. Yeah. Where, else, where else could you go like, to find that place, you know, you're a young adult trying to find a place of people actually uplifting, encouraging, building each other up. Like, where else are you going to go to find those that place in society? Oh, that's a question. Yeah, I'm just curious. Like, where, like, if I'm somebody right now who's like, yo, I'm mad, I'm frustrated, I'm depressed, I'm sad, you know, I'm isolated, I'm alone. Like, where can I go to find like-minded young adults? Even, like, young adults, I mean... Anybody, to me, anyone between the age of 25 and 40 is a young adult, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Well, technically, 18 to 40. Yeah. So, like, where do I go? Shout out to 40 and up, Clara. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm, I'm going to mainly speak for people outside of college. So, if you graduated college, this is for you. If you're in college... It, don't count. I mean, I wouldn't say it don't count, but, I mean, you're, you're around like-minded people already. And you're around humans. You're around humans consistently. <laughs> Classroom study groups, all that stuff. It's like you're around that. So people outside of college, I would say step one is find a similar interest. So for me, similar interest, it's really easy for me to make friends on the basketball court because I have this interest on the basketball court. Yeah. It gives me a greater chance to find people that are like-minded to me at the basketball court or the gym, whatever. So I think finding somebody... Or finding people that have similar interests to you, similar hobbies. It's a great way to connect with people. Um, you have to do some digging uh, to see if they have the same values. And you can actually, you know, hang around those people um, and and make a valuable, fr- valuable sh- friendship out of that. But I do think you have to go after similar, similar hobbies. Off, I mean, yeah. similar interests. I guess where I was going with that, you took it in a totally different direction. <laughs> but no, well, that's cool. It's well, cool. well, 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 well. <laughs> Um, my apologies. No, it was cool. I guess what I was going with that is that there's no, it's like, there's no place. Like physical location? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. There's no physical location. You can location. go anywhere to meet people. Yeah, you, you can, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, But, you know, there is no physical location where there's, it's like. Yeah, like just for pure connections of yeah. same value people. On a consistent basis. On a consistent basis. And that's what, and that's what we're creating. Got you. Yeah, you no, know? it's not that. Yeah, so that's so that's what we're creating, guys. Make sure you you go ahead and you subscribe to that Patreon. The link is always in the bio. The link is always in the video, guys. And um, and yeah, man, I just I don't know. I I feel for people, bro, when people are by themselves and isolated, dude. 
a lot of people are isolated. Yeah. A lot of people are depressed, man. No, nah, I mean, I'm, trust me, <laughs> yeah. I'm a big component of it. Um, I mean, I just, mm-hmm. I know, right? I found something. You found something? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Keep on going. I'm going to go. Just from my experience being in Indiana, like I said, I want to burn that RV to the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the first time for me being super disconnected with people mm-hmm. as far as friends, family, joy, whatever. Um, and a lot of the, like a lot of negative thoughts creeped into my head and, and you know, all the bad distractions that I, I tried to to do to make me not think about um, my current situation was was there, and I felt extremely lost. Um, I felt extremely lonely for the first time, and I was I felt like a drug addict that didn't have his drug anymore. Mm. Like I felt like man, I need where where is my attention? Mm-hmm. You know where are my where is she? Where is she? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I was just so disconnected, bro, for the first time. Like, I couldn't just, I feel like I just couldn't pick up the phone and call somebody or I, I couldn't just go over and see somebody. I was literally just stuck there waiting until the next day, wallowing in sin, <laughs> mm, <laughs> wallowing yeah. in, in just anxiety and, and all kinds of things, just feeling like I'm stuck in the rock in the hard place. Mm. You know, and it's tough, man. It's a yeah. Serious, tough period of time. And I do feel like um, there's a lot of people out there very similar, you know, graduated, moved to a new city and, you know, for a new job and just like, man, yeah. I have, still haven't met anybody. Yeah. Still haven't met anybody. I mean, I got my coworkers, but they I right, you yeah. know. Um, it's not a lot of depth. It's not a lot of depth, man. Because I was thinking about this. You think a lot. Let's see how I'm going to break this down. Break that down. That's how Fees thinks about how he's going to break it down. Okay. Here we go. This doesn't help when you talk as I think. (laughs) (laughs) So I just go ahead and talk as I think. Ooh, you saw that bar? No. (laughs) But uh, Stick to podcast. So when a lot of people think about pain, they think about physical pain or physical torture, right? So let's say I had a prisoner of war and I wanted to physically torture him. I would not feed him. I may beat him. You know, I may waterboard him. You know, I may do some physical pain. I will inflict some physical pain to cause trauma into this individual's life. Correct? Correct. But what most people don't understand what's even worse than physical pain is emotional pain, some Mm -hmm. would argue. And my question to you is, if you had a prisoner of war, what is the worst emotional pain you can do to an individual? You don't know I have no what I'm just saying. Just throw it out there. Like if you had a physical, uh, like a prisoner of war, and you wanted to torture them emotionally, isolation. Mm. probably isolation. Exactly, solitary confinement. Yeah, isolation. You would take this individual, you will put him in a hole, give him no contact with humans for 20 days. He will go insane. Yeah, he will go insane. Clearly, you will destroy him. Ooh, I'm about to go. Uh, freaking Johan Hari, man. I'm about to go on a crazy journey. I just saw something open up. I'm taking it. Take it. So we know that isolation is the worst pain to do to another person. And we self-inflict ourselves with isolation every single day. But But here's what we do. We appease, we numb the pain with television and social media. So watch this. Imagine... If there was a pill that you could take right now so that you wouldn't have to eat, you wouldn't be, I'm sorry, so that you wouldn't be hungry. So imagine if there's a pill that you could take right now so that you wouldn't be hungry. 
it'd be a dope pill, right? Because by taking the pill, you wouldn't experience any hunger and you can do so many things in life. What will happen after five days? You need a pill, yeah. Okay, you keep on eating and take the pill. But what will begin to happen to your body? You will get affected. Or you get hungry. You get hungry, but no, remember the pill takes away your hunger. Okay. But even though you're hung you're not hungry, your body still needs what? Food. And nourishment. Okay. So your body will begin to die. Yes. You may not you may not feel the mental signal of hunger, but your body still You'll inside affected. is being okay. affected by it. After a matter of time, what's gonna eventually happen to you? You're gonna die. You're going to die. So while you can numb the pain mm -hmm. or numb the signal that's communicating, I'm hungry to my body, your body still needs the food and nourishment. And if it doesn't get it, it's going to die. Mm -hmm. We do the same exact thing to our soul with social media, with television. We watch these things. We get, we get connected to this media and we use it to numb our desire for human intimacy. And we use it, we're on social media, we're looking at pictures, we're looking at videos, we're on TV, watching all that stuff. But deep down inside, while we're numbing that feeling of I need to be with somebody, your body is dying. And I feel like so many people are in that predicament. That's why they're hurting. Because in the moment, you're on Netflix, you're watching a great TV show, you feel like, man, I'm we're, I'm best friends with Will. I'm best friends with Martin. I'm best friends with Michael Scott. But when you turn that TV off, you know you're by yourself. You know? You know you still need that human interaction. And I see a lot of people are going through those effects. And they're using social media, especially to numb yourself in pain. Because think about it. Without social media and TV, you couldn't be at home all day. You couldn't. You go crazy. Yeah, it's like your natural state couldn't handle that. You could not handle that. You st but the thing about it is you still need people. The freaking mother suckers on the screen is not human being. That's not human interaction. That's numbing the pain. So I really feel like what's causing so much depression and anxiety and so much issues is those things. Our lack of human to human connection. Yeah, it's a drug, bro. Like you said, it's, a, it's like a, another hit. You know, like, all right, I got nobody to talk to, but I got this Instagram. You know, I can scroll through. Oh shoot, I reached it. I, man, that's like the it's like the most sorriest thing when you scroll through all your Instagram, like, oh, you caught up, caught up for the past three days. Like, God dang it. Now you gotta go to the explore page and just explore. Oh, there's an end to Instagram? Well, if you if you follow people and it'll show you all the posts, if you see all the posts in the last three days from all the people you're following, then that's and nothing else that you I've never see. known that. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean I'm addicted to it. <laughs> I'm lonely. <laughs> nah, but um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's like, it's like a drug, and like you said, it's a, it's a huge distraction. You know, it's a lot of people, like you said, can create a whole new world on um on IG. I won't say this guy's name, but I promise you, this guy in high school, one of the most popular guy in high school, but on Twitter, Facebook, you you would never know. Mm. He's just like booming. With followers and all kinds of stuff. I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, fam, you're not cool. Are like, you not that cool? Well, you said he was the most popular guy in high he school. He wasn't. Oh, wasn't the most no, popular. No, he was not. But okay. you've seen like what, what those platforms do to people. And yeah. it's like, it's literally um, a huge drug and a huge distraction. Yeah. Um, Because like, if I by myself, ain't nothing on TV, like freaking CSI without a trace. Duh, <laughs> without a trace. Law and order and whatnot. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you know, I run the social media, you yeah. know, um, just because uh, you want to know, you know, what's going on in the world and you want to feel included. Mm -hmm. I think, in, like, like now I said it best, inclusion is a hell of a drug. Yeah. So you want to know what's going on with the latest, whatever, um, so you can feel like you're worth something. Um, you like the likes because you feel accepted, mm -hmm. you know. You want to be DM so bad so you can be respected. Mm -hmm. um, you want to be followed back so you can feel like you are a somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 sad, but it's the, it's the truth. You mm -hmm. know, um, I think it's like it's like the same as somebody calling you back. Like I want some. I want you to call me back. I yeah. want you to follow me back. Yeah. It's the same thing. Um, 
like you said, it is a distraction. At the end of the day, you want somebody to watch Netflix with. Yeah. It's Netflix and chill. Yeah. You know? Not Netflix and loneliness. Yeah. You know, it's not, <laughs> Netflix and loneliness. Yeah, it's not the same thing, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, but I do think it, it's a distraction from the main issue. My question is, how can we, mainly I, when I get, when I go back to Indy, and be Hopefully, he won't be back there soon, guys. Please <laughs> do not let Chris be in Indi- Indiana for long. Support us on Patreon, guys. I'm for real, man. Don't let Chris be in Indiana. He's dying out there. <laughs> I'm for real. It's not cool. So, when I go back to Indy and I, and I settle in and realize I'm in this RV again, you know, yeah. what are some healthy ways that I can not be isolated? To me... I'm just being hundred. This is I'm being hundred percent honest. I'm uh, yeah. I want you to go to Patreon. <laughs> I'm for real. I know you are. I'm for real. No, this is really true. Go to Patreon. Go on it. Type in a post. Hey guys, I'm lonely. I need someone to talk to. Mm-hmm. Who's free? Who's up? Go to the Patreon. Find who's commenting. So, yo, are you down? Because, you know, we got it. We talked to everybody on the phone, basically. Yeah. The dope part about Patreon, guys, is you can, like, call anybody in the community. You can FaceTime them. You can um, Skype them, Google Chat, whatever it is. And then you hit them up. Because, like, you have access to people who could actually talk to you. Because, obviously, some people right now are in small small towns. So, while I could give you advice to drive down the street to, you know, Minnesota to talk to, you know, somebody in the community... Some people may not be able to do that. So for me, looking at what you're going through, the easiest thing to do is to go there and like find people, you know, find people who you know will already talk to you. Because there's a ton of people who are also lonely. Like for me, what I do is I hit up Francis mm-hmm. or John Mark. Mm-hmm. And I don't I don't text people. I don't. With all, woo, I'm going to save myself, bro. <laughs> I'm going to save myself. Woo. God be with me. I think this is wild. <laughs> but no, I don't text people anymore. I just call them. Yeah. You know? And you've been doing a better job of that I've been recently. Trying, yeah, I've and then trying. the dope part about FaceTime is FaceTime at least gives us a little bit more of human interaction, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go FaceTime somebody, you talk to them, you have a little bit of conversation, you feel good. That's what I would do. Because um, like I said, when you're when you have uh when you have human human interaction, it's so much different than watching somebody on a screen who you know doesn't give a F about you. You know? Yeah. So many people that people follow, they don't care about you, man. But a dope part about what we're building with the roommates is like, dude, you actually have human beings that will care and will converse. So that's what I would do if I was you. Yeah, yeah. So what about the... Okay. So the what about the people for some reason won't sign up for Patreon? Yeah. You know? What would you tell them to do? For the people who won't sign up for Patreon, the question is, how badly do you want it? I'm for real. There's like, a lot. Uh, how bad you want to not be isolated? How badly do you want to be healthy? Okay. Like, the core values on our show is becoming, which is a symbol of a tree, and that represents the process. Oh, bro, I, man, me and this girl had a great conversation. And I said, <laughs> the dope part about becoming is a symbol of a tree. I said, the oak tree is the tallest tree one of the tallest trees in the, on, I think so, the red, oak tree, I red tree. I think the red, red, red wood trees. Whatever, one of those trees. trees. It yeah, was yeah. the tallest trees. It literally kisses the sky mm-hmm. in a deep, intimate kiss. But at one point of its life, it was in the depths of the earth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the highest thing in the sky was at one point in the depths of the earth with the worms and the slugs mm-hmm. and the grime and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. But, but, but through time, it blossomed. So the beauty of becoming is that like some people right now they're they're living in hell. They're living through difficulties and you and you become, you grow into the man or woman that God created you to be. The second value is holistic health. And that's physically, emotionally, and spiritually, it's okay not to be okay. We understand you're depressed. We understand that you're anxious. We understand that you're lonely. We understand that you're frustrated. We understand that you're mad. When it's in that you're bitter, it's okay that you that you feel the way you feel. It's not okay to stay there. So let's go on a process of healing. So for me, the people who are like, I'm lonely right now, I'm isolated, I have no friends, I'm depressed, I'm sad, but are not willing to sign up to Patreon, 
My question is, how badly do you want it? Because if you want it, it's available here. Maybe you join the church. Maybe you join a nonprofit. There's other ways of connecting that is possible and it's just a great avenue. But my thing is that if you know that there's a place of help, why would you not be willing to go there? And you watch the show. People watch the show for weeks. Every week you come and you watch this show. Every week you're still lonely. Every week you're still isolated. Every week you're still depressed. Because while me and Chris will give you your spiritual high for the hour, you still have how many more hours in the week? 24 times 7 is da 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 What? I mean, I mean eight carried to 100 two. and... I don't know. 28? Come eight, on. Something like that. I think I did it right. You might have did it right. Seven. I think it's 118. Something like that. Something like that. Anyway. There's an eight in there. Yeah. Anyway, so... So yeah, for me, that's what I would tell them. I'd be like, even if it's not us, like, what are you doing, man? Like, it's serious. Huh? Huh? 168? Yeah, because you got to do two times seven. That's 14. Carry the two. 168. Oh, fudge. You're right. I thought it was... I did seven times one for some reason. I don't know why. Mm. And carry the four. Anyway, yes. So, yeah. So for me, it's just like... I, I don't know, man. I'm so obsessed with people becoming better. Like... Yeah, I mean, Hafiz. I mean, it's it's hard to to really make that actual stuff because, like, it is unhealthy. What's the alternative, as Gary Vee says? Chris? I mean, yeah, it's it's destruction. You know, I, it's you're right. I don't want you to die. Yeah, I don't want you to die. It's hard. I mean, like I said, it's hard making that initial step, bro. That's what I'm, I'm telling. you. I know it's hard, but what's the alternative? I'm right there with you. man. Yeah, it's like I and 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 okay. I need to put on my um my preschool teacher voice. Okay. Depression is a serious thing. Yes. Isolation is a serious thing. One of the worst phone calls I got was from a friend who tried to kill himself after overdosing with medicine. And he was in a mental institution for a month. One of the worst messages I ever got. This kid I love with all my heart. I haven't heard from him. I told, He called me and said, I just got out, the, got out of the hospital. I tried to kill myself. I wanted to end it all. One of the worst messages I got. Because of how much I love this person. Because of how much I've been there for him since he was a kid. And he's somebody who my soul yearns for. I can't let him die. You know what I mean? I just can't let him die. So I know I have to tell him, buddy, if you're going through that, call me. You have to call me. It's call me, call if you and if you if if I'm too scary, I'm too unapproachable, as Chris says. If there's issues with me, please find someone you can call. Find someone you can call and call them because I don't want you to die. I don't want you to die. And that's one extreme. So for me, it's like when it comes to people who are going through pain. I just don't know any other alternative but to take a step, you know? And that's what we're trying to create here is to give people who are really hurting an opportunity to take a step. Um, because I don't know, it just, people being lonely bothers me. I don't know if I ever told you this or not, but one of my my earliest memories as a kid was loneliness. Earliest memories. For some reason, I don't know, like it always gravitated towards me. Um, so when people are hurting and they're by themselves, I hate that man. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I can feel you on that because what, 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 what I remember as a kid was people always not thinking that they're good enough or not worthy enough or not accepted enough. So they demonize themselves and beat themselves up into like loneliness or not even trying or giving up mm -hmm. you know I, I mean I asked that question man just because it's hard man it's hard to take that step you been I don't know how long people have been struggling with something but it's hard taking that that leap of faith um, in anything and especially if it's something where you thought that it was coming from a higher power or something that you've been working hard from. Like people move different to different states for a purpose and wind up in 
a worse situation in their mind than they than they left. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's kind of embarrassing. I gotta go back, or I gotta do something different. It's like I gotta take another step. I mean, I already trusted God, or I already trusted this, mm-hmm. or I already trusted that, and now you ask me to do some more. Like I don't want to be hurt again. I don't want to be let down again. I don't want to be frustrated again. I don't want to be and none of those things. Mm-hmm. So it's like you continually asking me to make a effort when I haven't seen nothing. Mm-hmm. People haven't seen nothing, bro. Yeah. And my thing is that is Afi's going to fail you? Of course he is. Is Chris going to fail you? Of course he is. Is somebody in the roommate's community going to fail you? Of course, of course they are. Because we're all humans. And unfortunately, humans fail humans. Mm-hmm. What I'm offering is a hand. I'm not asking you to jump. I'm not asking you to leap. I'm not asking you to travel. I'm just asking you, hey, I'm I'm stretching my hand out for fellowship. We're stretching our hands out to support you. All you got to do is take the hand. You know what? Even if we let you down and we fail you, as for some people, that's going to be their story. I tried. You know? Like, I tried. We're trying to help. And I understand people's um, frustration. I understand why people wouldn't want to be a part because they've been let down before. But, man, the... One of my favorite pictures in life is the picture of the the guy who's like has a pickaxe and he's digging through the dirt and the other guy who is digging through the dirt. One guy is still like enthusiastically digging. The other guy gave up, but the guy who gave up was just this close. You know what I mean? Hitting, hitting those diamonds. And for me, I feel like a lot of people when bad things happen to them, they're this close to hitting the diamond, you know? And um, and I just don't want people to give up, especially if you've been watching this show for weeks for a reason, you know? If you didn't trust Chris, and, Chris or I, you wouldn't be watching the show. But you're watching the show for a reason because something obviously resonates with you and something that we communicate is giving you life and there's other people around the world who are also as life-giving, that are part of the Patreon community, that I think it's really, really special. And I I really want people to be a part of it, man, because that loneliness is a is a is a beast, bro. Yeah, man. I think I just want I want I want people to get out of that hell. Yeah. You know. I've been telling myself this. I mean, this would have been something that been keeping me going during like during no time in in India, especially in the RV. We have one life to live, and I constantly been telling myself, "This is not the life that God calls me to be. Mm-hmm. This is not something that I'm supposed to be in." Like. I think it's something I'm supposed to be experiencing, but I don't think it's something I'm supposed to stay in. Yeah. So I, I continue continuously have to make a conscious decision, confident effort to really get myself out of that hell, mm-hmm. and not even in physical locations. Really, just mentally, it's a mental hell. You mm-hmm. know, it's not. I could be in the hell in Houston. I could be in hell in Atlanta, whatever. But that mental hell. I have to get myself out of there, you know? And I feel like life is a constant battle of getting you out of hell. Cause, mm-hmm. And then hell is going to continue to come back. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, life happens. Yeah, so You might get fired. Somebody's going to die. I mean, something's going to happen that's going to put you right back in that mental hell. Mm-hmm. You got to find multiple ladders, yeah. multiple ropes, That's multiple really exits out of that hell. If Patreon is a rope, an extra ladder, great. 
If churches, great. If it's community, your mother, your father, your baby mama, I don't care. Find multiple ways to get out of mental hell. It's not the life that God calls you to be. And that's something that I continuously have to preach myself. All the time. Dude, that that point was so fabulous, bro. It's probably one of your best points of your life. <laughs> no, no, I'm not trying to be condescending, but it was just, it was fabulous because what I say, hmm. We're going, we're going everywhere, but this is fun. When you're when you're uh, when you're gosh, man. Shout out to Naruto Uzumaki, man. <laughs> shout out to Naruto Uzumaki. <laughs> Did you ever watch show. Naruto? I was cool, fam. I had women <laughs> in my <laughs> life. I had well, basketball. Well, as a man who had no women, <laughs> let me tell you about Naruto. I have to watch Naruto, though, because I feel like I can really relate So what to happened it. to Naruto, like he had this demon inside of him, the Nine-Tailed Fox. Okay. And what would eventually happen is like when he got overwhelmed, mm -hmm. the Nine-Tailed Fox would control him. You know, the demon Fox would control him and he would just destroy stuff. And like I said, Oh, if you haven't watched Lewis House episode, I kind of broke it down there. So I'm going to do the synopsis. But as Naruto got older, he was able to control the nine tail till eventually him and the demon inside of him became one. So instead of going on autopilot destroy mode, the demon would give him the power and strength. And he would find a way to control the beast inside of him. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, I used to be such a slave to my emotions. You know? Like when I was sad, I would spiral out of control. I would, I, I couldn't. And then I eventually, a verse in the Bible, I, I'm going to butcher it, man, because it's so bad. But at the end of the day, it's about God saying there's always a way out of temptation. And as I got older, I started to see a door. It was a weird illustration, but I started to see a door when I felt something. So if you remember, like, I mean, Chris has known me for a long time. We've grown a lot together. Like, I used to be very, like, when I was sad, I would just sit in the corner in the room, lights off, looking <laughs> at a window with the window blinds closed. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, not <laughing. laughs> I'm not laughing at you. It's just that picture is hilarious. Thank like, you. you're looking at this window, just like, yeah. But it was the way 50 Grand told me the story. <laughs> I never caught you like that. But anyways, I'm sorry. Okay. I ruined the whole book. It's all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sure. Sure, sure. You're the star. You're the star for a I'm reason. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, I'm just the... Uh... Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. All right. And um, and then I and then I realized, I was like, eventually I started seeing like, I, I said, no, you don't have to be sad anymore. Mm -hmm. I said, no, you don't have to be depressed. No, you don't have to be, you don't have to be anymore. And I started seeing a door out. And I was like, get out. I would tell I was like, get up, get out, get out, get out. And in those moments, I would slowly get out. And then I learned how to control those feelings of being in hell. I learned that I finally, as I became an adult male, and I saw how to get out of there. And um, it changed my life, bro. Mm. Bro, it changed my life. I used to soak. Yeah. When... That girl hurt me when I was like in 2014. Yeah. I would soak for like five, six, seven hours. Yeah. Just soaking. Yeah. And my friend said, you just love soaking. But I just didn't know I could not soak, you know? But then I got older. I saw a way out. And that's when I started really experiencing healing. Even up until today. When I have a bad day, I, I force myself out. Sometimes I force myself to leave the house and go for a walk. Like, and so... It's not easy, but the alternative is is depression and loneliness and pain, you know? And, and like I said, man, it's just going back to the social media point, especially with social media, it doesn't help when everyone else is smiling and happy and living the best life now, you know? Your freaking high school classmate is married with a nice job, children, you know, living the American dream and you're sitting in your room watching Netflix, haven't cuddled in ages, haven't felt the warmth of a woman. <laughs> it's so long. 
<laughs> the, feeling, the, feeling, the feeling of a woman is absolutely amazing. <laughs> that boy, that boy, fine. that boy, I feel you, boy. I tell y'all what, man. No, I feel you on that, bro. I think, I think for me, that came out to all wrong. <laughs> the feeling of a woman, the warmth of a woman, <laughs> mother. Fast forward through that part, <laughs> mother. I know your son. The that was bad. Was <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, guys. No, I think I mean to your point, bro. I, I, I realize for some reason I'm always after people approval, which is the number one thing I hear about myself. Number two is my body. What we talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> my body. The number one thing I hate about self is like I have to get people's approval. Mm-mm-mm. I know it's sad. So the the people at that time in my life that had control over me, over my thoughts, over my feelings, or had my identity about myself, wherever they said it was gospel. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of times where I felt like I was always a screw up and I would never be good enough. And it was just times I just wouldn't even like try. Or like you said, I had this fake humility mm. where I would beat myself down to like, so you can have no expectations. <laughs> 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 just absolutely yeah. no expectations from me. Yeah. Especially if it's a woman. A woman mm. tried to talk to me, like, oh my God, you're a good guy. No, I'm not. Kill mm. that right now. Mm-hmm. I'd rather you kill that so you won't be disappointed later. Which was very unhealthy because I gave people power over my life. Mm-hmm. And being in that RV, in that isolation, really made me, kind of forced me to not only read the Bible, I only read books, but I had to speak life into myself because I wasn't getting it at that time. Like mm-hmm. I wasn't, I didn't feel like I had a lot of girls' attention. Nobody was really calling me, texting me. I was dealing with a breakup. Um... It was nearly all the things that the podcast blew up. I'm by myself and everybody praising Hafiz. Oh my God, Hafiz. I don't see any of these praises ever. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking but about. But no, I was just talking about like, as far as the podcast, it's like, man, you know, all the stuff that we finally put work in and we getting attention to benefits, I felt like, you know, I just wasn't receiving it. Like, I was just sitting there like, dang. I wasn't receiving it. I don't know where the attention is coming, yeah, Hafiz, coming to. Come on, Hafiz. Anyways. Um, so it it forced me to really get myself out of that hell, you know, and re-identify my identity. So it's it's one of the things where we feel our listeners, you know, and and I think it's a lot of men out there that feel us too, because men we don't talk. Women deal with loneliness better than us. You know, they they have their sorority sisters. They have, you know, <laughs> their book club and wine and cheese and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and no wine and cheese go together like that. You know, I'm not rich enough to know that. Um, but men, no. It's not a lot of men out there. Um, they're expressing themselves and opening themselves because even when we was going through it, so like we was in the same house and sometimes we didn't know what we was going through. Mm-hmm. And that's why we always say the podcast saved us because like all the things that the fans and the listeners listen to, it's our first time hearing that stuff too. You know, like, I remember once that one episode, Men Get Heartbroken too, episode 20. Mm-hmm. One of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, I didn't even know the things that Khalil was going through and what you was going through with, yeah. with y'all women. You know, I just didn't know. And the podcast exposed that. I was just like, holy crap. Like, I didn't know. Yeah. So, just a message to the men, we feel you. Mm-hmm. And one of those ropes, one of those ladders to get you out of that mental hell is to speak, is to talk, is to say something. And it can be something as an email. It can be something as a DM. It don't have to be, if you're not comfortable with a phone call, it have to be that. But Hafiz and I are here for you. We understand your pain. We understand what you're going through. But once again, in this life, it's going to be constant mental hell that's going to pop up. Like I said, it's going to be a death. It's going to be you lose your job. It's going to be some situation that's going to cause you to go back into mental hell. You have to have multiple strategies, multiple ways, multiple ropes, multiple ladders to 
get you out of the pits of hell. And that's what we're trying to do. No, that's really that's really good. And um, and one of the things that we do on the show be, because we know it's so hard is we initiate in the vulnerability. Yeah. Um, that we go ahead and say, I know it's hard for you to say I'm not okay. I know it's hard for you to say I'm hurting. I know it's hard for you to say that I'm lonely and depressed and I'm sad and I'm bitter and I'm resentful. I'm frustrated and I'm angry. I understand it's so hard for you to communicate these feelings, especially to young men. Um, so we we just we go first. We'll go over the hill first. We take all the arrows. They'll call us all that stuff like that. Um, nope, I won't bring them up. Oh, no, 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 not going back there. Um, and um, and yeah, so that's what we're we're trying to do. We're trying to help. Uh, we're trying to really give life to people, man. I mean, people say, let me give you guys a secret, some behind the scenes secret about our show. Our show, like, congratulations to Christopher Jordan Bilo for starting the business. The Roommates is an official business. Congratulations, oh, no, Christopher. Congratulations to you as well. You play so, The Roommates part. is an official business now. Yes. So, ta-da! Thank you all the people who support. Hafiz is a business owner. So is Christopher Jordan Bilo. He's the CEO. I'm just the um, account executive. I'm, and, I, uh, see, I'm, the, <laughs> I'm the king over the business. Hafiz is the king over the content. That's what that's what we, we decide to do. So, um, the, we don't have a podcast. As I told people before, McDonald's doesn't sell burgers. That's not how they make their money. McDonald's sells real estate. We don't sell a podcast. We're not a podcast. People think we're a po- we're not a podcast. Mm-hmm. The podcast is just a side hustle. Mm-hmm. Our real hustle is friendship, counseling, and community building. That's what we really do this for. So I tell you guys all day long, and I'm and I'm reiterating this: if all you do is watch the roommates once a week, and then you go on with your merry day, you are experiencing one percent of the 10% of the tip of the iceberg that we provide in content wise. Like this is literally the least thing we do. We are, like I said, the podcast is a side hustle that we just put out to the people once a week. Our true, the business, the roommates LLC, which is an official entity recognized by the United States government and the IRS. (laughs) (laughs) The purpose of that organization is friendship, counseling, and community building for all people, regardless of your ethnicity, regardless of your religious background, regardless of your political background, regardless of your socioeconomic background, this community, friendship, and counseling building service is for you. Don't miss out on that, guys. That's why we created the Patreon. That's why we created the Patreon, guys. Do not miss out on it. Don't be the person who's going through hell and you have this amazing resource when i was 20 years old and i was depressed and angry i didn't have this so many people say i never knew this existed there's so many people right now who are asking god god let me find some life-giving content do you know how many people told me they found us because they typed in the word how to overcome heartbreak on youtube that's how they found the show. They type in the word, how to overcome heartbreak. I'm sad. What do I do next? I'm lonely. Where, where do I? That's how they found us. Do you know how many people right now are searching as we talk? And some of you guys found it. People will be dying to be in your shoes right now. Guys, please don't miss out on that opportunity. Join it, man. Join that Patreon. It's not about the money. It's not about the money. The only reason we're charging money, like I said, because Chris is in Indiana. He's depressed. He's lonely. He's living in an RV with no heat. He has to use heated blankets to sleep at night. No running water. He has to shower at the YMCA. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. He won't tell you these things. I'm going to tell you these things, guys. That's why we started the Patreon. The only reason we're charging is to help Chris get a living. He wants, he wants a girlfriend. No girls will date him living in an RV. It's a shame. He's a great guy. All the girls hit him up on the DMs and they find out you had lived in an RV. Then they say, no, thank you. I've never seen women run so fast in my life than they're running in the Olympics with Russia with the steroids. No doping. Anyway, I'm, I'm for real, guys, man. Please, 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 guys. 
be a part, man. Don't be alone anymore. Don't go through pain. And like I said, you know what? Even if you don't want to be in the Patreon, find a dope church. Find a nonprofit. Find an organization. Find something. But just please don't die in the silence. Don't die in isolation. And like Chris says, don't put yourself in that literal hell and find a way. And I pray that you find a way. And I know God will give you the strength to find your way, to find a door where you can walk out of it. Amen, brother. I have nothing else to say. Go ahead and wrap it up then. Wrap it up then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, just to, to our fans, to our listeners, once again, we greatly appreciate all the support. All the love, all the connections, all the DM. We love the phone calls. We love the FaceTimes. We love all the things that we did. It was so cool talking to y'all. And it felt, I felt love, man. And I, I still don't think it really hit us exactly what Hafiz and I are creating and what we are doing. But we are grateful. And to the to the men and the women that are experiencing hard times, loneliness, um, I, I, some state of mental health, we're here to say that we're men and we've been there too. We are not perfect human beings. Our lives are not perfect. And we're here to not only live out the five core values, but we're here to serve and we're here to be leaders in this movement that we're trying to create. At the end of the day, we're trying to bring light to this world and this is our vehicle and it's our way to doing that. Um, so, if you want to hop on a train, get your plane ticket, put some gas in the car, you know, bring your freaking paddle on a rowboat, please join our team, join our support, and let's create a sensational universe. Of course, guys, and that is www.patreon.com slash roommates. As always, the link is in the description below. It's www.patreon.com slash roommates. My name is Hafiz. Chris is the star of the show, baby. And we are the roommates and adios. Bye.